we mean by pelvic instability, right? Anterior tilt of the pelvis or too much anterior tilt of the pelvis, too much posterior tilt of the pelvis, a shift in the hips from left to right. Other ways the pelvic floor can be unstable is the base of the pelvis due to pregnancies, giving birth, dysfunctions, sitting all day, that added pressure on the pelvic floor, the misfiring of our deep core because the pelvic floor is part of that deep core. Because there are so many muscles that pass through the pelvis, connecting the legs to the trunk, trunk to the legs, and our hips are designed for mobility, and our lumbar spine, lower back designed for stability, it's easy for the muscles in those joints to get confused. Because yoga is a practice that works in all of the planes of the body, understanding hip flexion, hip extension, how we shift the weight from the right to the left leg, and then how we involve the deep core in this, that's going to get you to pelvic stability in three dimensions. I'm using my hip points in the front of my body as a marker. I am now in anterior tilt of the pelvis. This is hip flexion. Now I go to posterior tip of the pelvis. The hip points are moving backwards. I'm in hip extension. So how do we find that stability in our pelvis in the yoga practice? So we can have the mobility that we need in our hips in a stable way. We start with symmetrical work and then we move that into asymmetrical work. Here's an asymmetrical way that Angela teaches pelvic stability. She is using the outer hip. She's strengthening the outer hip that she's pointing to right here. And then she is moving her pelvis over that fixed thigh bone. Notice her hip control and her lumbar control. This would mimic some of the pelvic stability we work, we'd do in tree or warrior three. By putting the block here, I can't sink into the hip or I'm going to lose the block. So I've got to activate gluteus medius and find that balance between posterior and anterior tilt. 